morning uh, ladies and gentlemen and uh, felicitations of the day international women's day uh, and a big thank you to the organizers for calling me over this is a very uh, topic which is so contemporary and so relevant uh, in a country like india where we are facing challenges uh, of security of many kinds and one of the observations i had from the first session and i think that is the biggest challenge is that largely our cyber security paradigm is still drawn from our physical security paradigm so i think that that, that is just a comment and an observation maybe we need to think about it and it's open to debate and with that i'd like to cover some of the you know some of the things that are challenging uh, i see uh, homeland security today so this whole concept of homeland security as you know took center stage after 911 when uh, for the first time the united states of america realized that the borders were not geographical borders uh, and the enemy or the alien could be right within the landmass of united states of america and that's how uh, all of you know how department of homeland security was set up and today it's such an evolved uh, department and a large credit goes to them that over these years there's not been a single incident of that kind and to that extent there are some lessons that we need to learn and uh, engaging population engaging citizens and i think this came up in the first session as well is key to getting getting to the heart of the matter as far as homeland security is concerned because the speed scale of information in people and community is immense so gone are the times when information followed hierarchies today you have cameras flashing live events into the in, in into the drawing rooms with the result that the pressure on the government to deliver services has increased many times so you often find that some of our leaders in the government realize an event has happened when actually the camera crews are right up outside their offices they haven't even got the information in their normal flow so that's a huge challenge for leaders and many many of us here uh, have been leaders some of us are practicing leaders in the government so i think this is a point that we need to remember one of them which we need to remember so i'll i'll just cover some two or three themes because there's very limited time and we have a number of speakers a quick uh, look at the homeland security scenarios uh, how important the network is because with all these systems coming together and the foundation being the network it's very important that we begin with the network uh, physical security and infrastructure security is a well covered topic i won't touch on it i'll skip that and then i'll straight away go into command and control which i think is the core of the matter which is what i just mentioned which is about a government leader having to face the media having to face the citizens and having to respond to events that have happened about which little information is known and there's a lot of fuzzy you know uh, system which actually is around, around there and lastly some internal security references so let's look at this matrix i mean you have various scales of emergency and this actually is uh, truly represents the scale at which we have problems in china india indonesia you know countries of the scale and size where you need to manage emergencies people are increasingly moving from villages to cities urban security is getting very critical uh, and you have a range of threats you know from a isolated incident of an ied or a bomb on the roadside right up to terrorism and while some of them are man made some of them could be natural as well so broadly public safety and security the well being of the citizen the physical security of the citizen it can be magnified a million times a billion times and then get the concept of homeland security the lines which separate internal security and external security has become very thin you don't know where it begins and where it ends so these are some of the challenges so the proposition here is that while systems are getting deployed like 
e-passport, for example, or you know, the security, uh, sorry, the economic offenses wing is going after criminals, economic criminals. There is an underlying assurance that all these systems need at the network level so that the gaps in the networks are not exploited by criminals and aliens. So there's this, this is whole cycle where you have an incident, uh, before the incident you're prepared for it, you pr try and prevent it, detect it as soon as you can, assess it and then you respond and this feedback cycle continues. So largely today's security management in many ways relies on the network because I, I remember in 94, 95 uh, when CDs had just come in and the Defense Security Corps guard at South Block would check the CDs and the first set of smaller devices, what we call data sticks or USB, had just started coming in and there were no instructions to the physical security team to filter that out. They didn't even know how to recognize it. Now these are challenges actually at the, at the, on the ground which actually needs to be dovetailed into the larger system. So you have a whole lot of applications, a lot of content and some of the government departments truly are dealing with information in the public space. Right? So that's a huge challenge to have all of that content and applications on many kinds of devices. The desire of the government is to provide services on the cell phone. That's another challenge. So the whole thing has to be seen together. And what brings it all together is, is the network which, which is underneath. So the, so the proposal here is to actually make it integral and have it connected. So you, you are ready. The barriers and deterrence to protect citizens and enable accurate detection in time. And a lot of coordination between, between various arms and wings of the government. One of the challenges, and I, I will relate to uh, the incident in Mumbai, 2611, where an incident happened and like many emergency incidents, there's a staggered, uh, there's an escalation which is staggered. The response is staggered. So the forces which get applied by the state is staggered, right? It begins with the local policeman who's carrying a lati. That's how it all begins. And then it goes right up to the highest, you know, and the most powerful uh, arm, which is the National Security Guard in such incidents. When an incident like this happens, you have all kinds of people coming in. They carry equipment of their, of their own, of various kinds, and then it is a challenge for the local commander and the joint operation center there to bring them all together for a unified operation. And I think that was, 2611 reflected that challenge. While they did a wonderful job in coming to terms within 24 to 48 hours, there were a lot of lessons in the first 24 to 48 hours which could be taken home about how forces need to work together, prepare together, and even rehearse together for such situations. As a common citizen, what I understand now is that the government is a lot more prepared, a lot of rehearsals are happening, and uh, we are better equipped to ad ad address these emergencies. So networks are mission critical, really. So between a 99.9 .9 reliability that you need on a network to something which is 99.99 .99 in some networks, there's a lot of work that we need to do as, as uh, technical people who are in support of operational people to design the right architectures. What we do, and I'm, I'm quite sure there are a lot of other industry partners who do this, is to cover the three dimensions in space and time through various net, networks of all kinds. What is important here is the, the, you know, to have a unified single network doing all of it is well nigh impossible. What will actually happen on ground, forces will come from different parts of the country, possibly even outside the country for a situation. And then we need to have the underlying foundation to bring them all together and address it. Right from a petrol car upwards to a, you know, a helicopter which is covering the operation. And here you have a situation where you have leaders who need to, who need to continually update the leadership the operations rooms in MHA, uh, 
would like to know the facts on the ground. The, there's so much of international exposure, so much of media coverage that leaders like to be in control all the time as far as information is concerned. Those, these are some of the challenges. And with proliferation of cell phones today, and cell phones getting to be so powerful, it is important that the network and the devices can truly come together in operations like this. So some of the key functions in a police operation center, some of them could be permanent, some of them could be ad hoc. You need to coordinate. There are times when policy, uh, policies are made, operations have to be carried out, information is gathered. And very important today, I mean, this could possibly be the first bullet in the slide, is about public information dispersal. Public is demanding information all the time. Never before, I mean, in history has a government been so, so much exposed to public demand and hunger for information. Uh, last week I was at a summit in Singapore, uh, in a public sector summit, and one of the things which was interestingly discussed is uh, a common strain, a common thread of people not being happy with governments all over the world. I don't know, I mean, if, if you notice, right across the globe, across continents, governments are facing this challenge of meeting public aspirations. And one of the areas where I think the governments need to get the act together is to get on top of information. Hosting VIPs, I think it's important, because these are the people who take decisions, and some of these decisions are on the fly, on the ground, so that ability to continually carry out briefings in operation centers is important. So these are some of the platforms that, that have been deployed. And when I come to the last reference case, I, I can explain it in a little more detail. So right from a brick and mortar command and control center to one which can be airlifted from an airfield to one which could be deployed on a small little jeep and carried in a hand in form of an emergency communication kit. So these are all the platforms that potentially could be used. We are also aware that government agencies, law enforcement agencies are already using some of them. And the whole idea is to unify the network of EOCs. And one of the challenges that the government always has is what potentially could be happening in a remote district in Karnataka, for example, within 24 to 48 hours could be a national crisis. And who knows, it could be an international crisis as well. So that ability to bring together emergency operation centers across the country and across states possibly across countries, is a capability that we should soon figure out. So this is one snapshot of an emergency response vehicle. Uh, and I'm aware that one or two agencies in India have very sophisticated response vehicles of this kind. Uh, and it is potentially one vehicle from where virtually you could conduct operations for seven days at a time. And uh, normally in its wake, it has other vehicles which provide logistic support. Because 2611 kind of situation potentially could even happen in other national vital areas, uh, you know, uh, some power grid stations and things like that. So this is one look at the security operation center. Many of them are deployed, working. Uh, Cisco has actively participated around the world in deploying some of them. And this is one, one example of an emergency response vehicle. You can see the large number of communication terminals and devices which are there inside this vehicle. And what we did is we used an Ashok Leyland platform to build this whole thing. And what, what, what is important is you could have the head of state potentially not available, but would like to be briefed every 30 minutes on a national emergency. Do you have the capability to do it from that point where the incident has happened? A quick set of uh, references, uh, crisis management, uh, something what is mandated to the NSG. Uh, another highlight is a Kumbh Mela kind of an event, one of its kind in the world, remarkably managed. And uh, I understand a lot of ICT has gone in, uh, not very sophisticated, but being managed wonderfully well. Public transport, uh, I know Bangalore traffic police certainly uh, are very active in using platforms like BlackBerry. And these are some of the areas where Cisco is actively involved, uh, more globally and less in India, but we intend to contribute more to the national cause. Thank you.